the bright side <laughs> Thanks for the introduction, Rajdi. And I would also like to start by thanking Pratap and uh, Mandar for inviting me to give this talk. But I guess they couldn't be around today. <coughs> so I'll, uh, um, uh, this is, uh, I'll talk about spin mode switching in the quantum hall effect. And uh, this is work done in collaboration with Udit Khanna, who was a PhD student of mine and who is now a Sackler postdoc at the Weizmann Institute in uh, Tel Aviv. Uh, Ganpati Murthy, who is at um, University of Kentucky, who is a faculty member there, and Yuval Geffen from Weizmann Institute. And uh, since I uh, was told that the uh, audience may be somewhat more general, I will start with a brief introduction to the integer quantum Hall effect and basically explain how it's the first topological phase and explain what is the bulk edge correspondence in the integer quantum Hall effect. And then I'll uh, explain some of the earlier work which has been done on edge reconstruction in the presence of Coulomb interactions. And finally, I'll come to our own work on edge mode spin switching, which is a form of spin reconstruction in the edges and end with some summary and future projects. So let me start with what is the quantum Hall effect. It's a well-known uh, uh, phenomenon that occurs in two-dimensional electron systems at low temperatures and in the presence of strong magnetic fields. When you apply a field along the x direction, a Hall voltage is measured in the transverse y direction and you think of the magnetic field as in the perpendicular direction in the z direction. Um, Semi-classically, you can explain this very simply. Uh, semi-classically, the Hall resistance was expected to be linearly proportional to the magnetic field. But experimentally, what was seen is that you actually got very well quantized steps as a function of the magnetic field instead of having a linear resistance. Uh, the main uh, interesting point about this was that the uh, quantized steps were completely independent of details of the sample, such as the size, shape, impurities, temperature, etc. And it was extremely uh, accurately quantized to one part in a billion. And uh, this was done in uh, 1980. And uh, as many of you would know, they got the Nobel Prize very quickly in uh, a couple of years. So the Hall conductance is quantized in units of E squared of over H. And the Hall resistance, H by E squared, is now the unit of resistance and is called the von Klitzing and it's about 25.8 kilo ohms. As I said, it's known extremely accurately. This was initially seen in the two-dimensional electron gases. A 2D electron gas is formed by a layer of aluminum gallium arsenide between layers of gallium arsenide. But in recent times, of course, as is all of you know, quantum Hall is seen in, the, in graphene systems as well, and people here work on this quite a bit. Semi-classically, you can explain this uh, by thinking of uh, closed orbits in the interior. You have a magnetic field perpendicular to the plane. So you know that in the presence of a magnetic field, the electrons will form closed orbits. And so uh, if you look at a finite size sample, then at the edges of the sample, the electrons can only go in one direction because these are forced to go in these kinds of orbits. So at this lower edge, it will go this way. And at the upper edge, it is forced to go this way. So these are called skipping orbits. And it's ultimately the electrons at the edges which carry the current. And uh, the <coughs> direction of the electron flow at the edges is fixed by the sign of the magnetic field. If you reverse the sign of the magnetic field, that will go in the opposite direction. And you can 
roughly understand why there is a very well quantized and there is no backscattering because of the fact that the left movers and the right movers are spatially separated. At the quantum mechanical level you can explain this in terms of the single particle energy levels of a, a system of electrons moving in a two dimensional sample in the presence of a perpendicular magnetic field. And this is a problem which many of you would have done in quantum mechanics. The gap, the Landau gap is uh, given by E b by m and the Landau level energies are E n is n plus half h cross omega and uh, for integer values of n and they are highly degenerate. In each of these Landau levels the number of degenerate states that you have is actually fixed by the number of flux quanta and it is just given by b by h c by e which is E b by h c. And uh, in terms of the density of electrons the filling factor of the Landau level is given by the total density of electrons given by the density of each Landau level. And whenever nu is an integer you know that an integer number of Landau levels are filled. And uh, when the Fermi level is in the gap between here I have just plotted it schematically when it is in the gap between the Landau levels and uh, if you have disorder then these levels are broadened so that you have uh, uh, and you expect these states to be localized and you have extended states in the middle. So, the idea is that as provided disorder exists so that there are some states in the gap then you can it is easy to understand why you will get these plateaus because as you go through as you change the magnetic field as long as the states are localized you do not get any change in the current and then when you go to the next Landau level you will get uh, when you go through the extended states you can go to the next Landau level and you can get uh, plateaus around integer filling. So, essentially this is basically the essential old idea of uh, how you explain the quantum Hall effect. And uh, one can think of uh, the bulk edge correspondence by saying that the bulk spectrum consists of degenerate Landau levels which bend at the edges due to the confining potential. And uh, you essentially get one edge per each of the Landau levels at each of the two edges. If this could be the top edge and the bottom edge and you would get one edge. And these turn out to be chiral because the velocity of the electrons is given by this 1 by E b d e by d y and so at one end they will be right moving the other end they will be left moving. So, and as I already said you know that because of the fact that the right movers and the left movers are spatially separated even if you had any kind of disorder in the system the electrons prefer to go around it and it cannot backscatter. So, this is the reason this explains the accuracy and the robustness of the quantum Hall effect and why it is not affected by impurities or disorder. So, this is the was the old understanding of uh, quantum Hall effect and once again as many of you probably know there is also a topological explanation for the quantization of the conductance. The Hall current is actually related to something called a topological invariant which is called the churn number. The idea is that uh, if at every point on the Brillouin zone there is a wave function and uh, uh, this wave function uh, the phase of this wave function can wind as you go, go around the Brillouin zone or the torus. And this winding number is something called the churn number. And the integer quantum Hall effect is given for each fill Landau level as e squared by h into c, c which can be computed for these bands for the Landau bands. And uh, this is how now one explains the quantum integer quantum Hall effect. And the recognition that churn numbers can exist in bands even without a magnetic field even with what has what uh, led is what has led to this whole new revelation of what are now called topological materials topological band insulators and so on in the last decade. So, this is something which may be familiar to everyone because of the fact that in the last few years there has been a lot of work than on topological materials. But that is not the topic of this talk so I would not go any more into it. I will just mention the bulk edge correspondence can be understood because the churn number is also directly related to the number of chiral edge states 
And so now in many ways it is the integer quantum Hall effect is called is thought of as the first topological insulator. So, with that background old uh, older background let me now come to the idea of what happens when you include a Coulomb interactions or electron electron interactions into the system. This leads to something called edge reconstruction which I will describe now. So, all of you or probably most of you are familiar with the idea that for once you include electron electron interactions in the quantum Hall system you get the fractional quantum Hall effect, but that is not going to be the focus of this talk. What I want to emphasize here is that electron electron interactions are important even in the integer quantum Hall effect. Firstly, they needed to define the ordering of Landau levels once I include spin in the system and uh, very small z, uh, realize that, this, uh, uh, that the Zeeman splitting is actually very small. And it also causes uh, edge reconstruction which is the change in the number and position of the edge states. So, let us uh, talk about spin full el uh, electrons now. Naively, the splitting between the Landau levels, the cyclotron energy is actually the same as the Zeeman splitting when the G, G the Landau G factor is 2. Because if you look at delta which is G mu B B, then for G is equal to 2, this turns out to be the same as the cyclotron gap. But actually, in realistically speaking, in most materials, G is much less than 2, and this band mass also turns out to be less than what you think of as the real mass of the system. So, actually when you put in realistic values what you find is that this delta is much less than h cross omega. So, Landau levels are actually almost spin degenerate and if I did not have Coulomb interactions the, the Landau level gap would be at nu is equal to 2 because you would first fill the nu is equal to 1 you would fill the state nu is equal to the lowest Landau level with both spin up and spin down states. right? So, you would not get any gap at nu is equal to 1, but uh, Coulomb interactions can change the spacing and order of the levels. Even if you put a slight Coulomb interaction this is just an illustrative example I am giving. Once you put in Coulomb interaction the red and the pink blue are the ones which are actually one is spin up and one is spin down. What you find is that the minute you put in a Coulomb interaction this is E c by omega the Coulomb interaction in units of the uh, Landau level spacing. What you find is that the, they split and uh, the spin up and the spin down no longer have the same energy levels. And if you go, go sufficiently far what you will find is that the spin up of the lowest Landau level and the spin up of the next Landau level are filled before they come lower in energy before the uh, spin down of the lowest Landau level. So, although 0 up is always the lowest energy it turns out that the low uh, ordering of the other states can change. So, for instance in this picture beyond 3.5 0 up 0 down goes instead to 0 up 1 up. So, it goes from an unpolarized state to a fully polarized state. So, point here I want to make here is that Coulomb interaction can change the order of Landau levels. And essentially what you find is that the plateau at nu is equal to 1 is actually also an interaction dependent effect, it is a quantum Hall ferromagnet. Because, because of Coulomb interactions it is that uh, up spin electron energies becomes lower than the down spin electron energies. So, once all the up spin gets filled you get a plateau and that is what is called a quantum Hall ferromagnet. In fact, for higher fill, uh, fillings as well the order of the filling of the Landau levels is determined by the value of the electron electron interactions. For instance, if I take nu is equal to 3 that is 3 fill Landau levels as the Coulomb interaction increases when the Coulomb interaction uh, uh, E c by omega is around 2.5 what you find is that there is a bulk first order phase transition from 0 up, 0 down, 1 up to 0 up, 1 up, 2 up. In fact, it becomes a fully polarized state at 
nu is equal to 3 at once I include Coulomb interactions of this form. <coughs> so, okay, this is one effect that the uh, I have already described of what the um, Coulomb energy does. The second uh, effect is that of what something called edge reconstruction. I have already shown that there is gapless edge states one per Landau level and which is what we call the bulk edge correspondence, but it is only certain minimal properties of the edge such as the Hall conductance that is determined by the bulk. Other properties can actually be affected by details such as the smoothness of the edge potential and electron electron interactions and this is what is called edge reconstruction. So, I will explain that in a little more detail. We the, at the edge you have a confining potential and depending on the confining potential we can actually have what are called sh sharp edges or smooth edges because the confining potential here I am using a background potential positive density potential to uh, uh, give the confining potential and uh, it actually falls linearly from uh, whatever the maximum value it has to 0 in some width w. If this w were very small and it fell sharply, then I would call that a sharp edge, right, because that is how the edge of the sample goes, but there you can go towards the edge of the sample in a smooth way as well.